to get them all called up here. Good morning. Try it again. Good morning. Thank you. We are awake. Um, first things here. Uh, if anyone is interested in being a delegate from our congregation uh, to World Conference next year, uh, I'm going to read something about that, so bear this in mind. We're getting very close to the November 11th deadline for those willing to serve as delegates at the World Conference in 2023 to place their names on the ballot. At this time, Central USA Mission Center still needs about 100 people for this important task. We're coming to you to ask for your support in helping us spread the word to your congregations. As for clarification based on questions we have received at the Mission Center, we invite all members of the Central Mission Center, no matter your age, to be a delegate. Um, used to not be that way, but... Uh, and was an age limit previously, delegates will participate in meaningful conversations and discussion, um, <clears throat> making over topics that will affect community of Christ worldwide. The role of the delegate is important to the future of the church. Uh, there are two ways to register to be a delegate. You can visit centralmission.org slash delegate, or you can call Laura Reed and I have that number if anybody wants that later, to enter your registration. So you can get a hold of the Mission Center. Um, you can let me know, and I can pass that along as well. Uh, um, Ken and his family are enjoying um, a little more time off right now. He is back from, from his travel, and although he got a, a little cold sleeping on the ground, I'm sure he enjoyed himself. Uh, next next Sunday is Potluck Sunday. Uh, it'll be a soup slash chili uh, meal. So keeping with the theme meals, uh, everybody can bear that one in mind next Sunday. Uh, there's a women's activity coming November 12th, and that'll be here at the church from 1 to 4. Dana Ferris will be teaching how to make fall decorations. Um, there is next weekend, October 29th, Saturday, uh, and you could see this on the back window, and I'm going to put this one back on the front window, but Parkview and Green Valley are going together, and there's going to be a congregational activity. It is a hayride at Micah uh, in Oak Grove. Um, they want you to come early. It's going to be from 430 until 8. Um, to hike and to play games, enjoy the outdoors. Um, and it only will be canceled if, they're, if it's raining. Uh, at 5.30, they will have a fire, food, and the hay rides will be started uh, first, and then a campfire will follow. Hot dogs, buns, and condiments will be provided. They're asking everybody that come to bring a side dish, a dessert, or the beverage to share. Uh, also, they would like someone to volunteer to lead campfire that evening. So if you know of someone or you have a desire to do that, um, please let them know, maybe Josh or Micah, either one of those two. Uh, you could tell me and I'll pass it along. Are there any other announcements for this morning? <clears throat> Uh, you've received our very small uh, order of service this morning, and obviously we want to keep uh, Doug in mind as he leads this service, and then um, Stephen, I know, would enjoy uh, your continued prayers on his behalf. Once again, are there any other announcements that I might have missed? One other thing. Um, Ted Cox's family has the RSV problem going around. Um, they've been pretty sick with it. He just now told me this morning they are doing a little better. But uh, please keep them, uh, that family, in your prayers. There's a lot that we need to keep in our prayers. Uh, if you'd bow with me.
our Lord and Father. We uh, have gathered together on a very windy but beautiful October day and a Sabbath day that uh, we have come to worship you. Lord, uh, it is important that we gather together, that we unite our hearts, that we unite our prayers for one another, that uh, we continue to remember you and others that uh, need our prayers. Lord, we understand the kind of love that you have for us, and it is uh, sometimes beyond our understanding how uh, beautiful that love is. Help us to try to understand better uh, what you would have us to do in our own individual lives and collectively as saints of yours. Lord, I would ask that uh, those who are ill, those who are traveling, those who can't be here but have a desire to do so, that you would bless them. Bless them with your healing. Bless them with a touch of your spirit. And Lord, uh, as we are about to enter into uh, an hour of worship, I pray that it would be your spirit that would lead this upcoming hour. Lord, I pray these things knowing that every prayer that's uttered, both vocal and silent, are heard by you. And for this, I am grateful, and I know everyone else is as well. Be with us, is my prayer. In Christ's name, amen. It is our good pleasure to welcome you here this morning. We come not out of uh, being forced to, but we come because of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It causes us to gather together and community to worship because our highest spiritual aspirations are involved in community. They're involved in Zion, right? We hope for Zion. And that is not a life that is lived in separation from one another, but it is a life that lives, is lived in community. And so it's important that we come and we worship, that uh, we might draw strength from one another and realize that our uh, individual walks uh, have a purpose in one another's lives. I've uh, pondered a few different scriptures as to what to read as a call to worship. I think my uh, thought and desire for this morning was that we would praise the Lord for his goodness in our lives our thankfulness that being part of the gospel and an affirmation of testimony that our Redeemer lives. Right? And it is that testimony of Jesus, 
I believe, which is paramount in the restored gospel. It is the expression of that, the sharing of that with one another and other people that's important. And so, um, maybe two scriptures are in order. I'm going to talk about, read about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of promise and what it does. The shedding abroad in our souls, the pure love of Jesus Christ. So out of Ephesians 3, for this cause I bow my knees. This is a, the Apostle Paul. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. And I'd like to tie that in with uh, 2 Corinthians 4. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our, flesh, in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus might be, also, may be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then it worketh death unto us, but life unto you. It's the love of Christ, right? So this day I would that we would uh, praise the Lord and open with Hymn number five, praise ye the Lord. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, 
Lord, as we approach your throne at this time, it is with praise in our hearts. We praise you, Father, for the beautiful day that you've given us. We praise you for the opportunity to come into your house of worship. And we ask, Father, that your good spirit would be with us this hour, that we might indeed draw closer to you. I would uphold my brother Steve. that the words that you have placed upon his heart, that he might indeed speak in your stead with power. Father, be with us, that our hearts and minds might indeed be open to what Steve is going to share with us. I would ask these things, Father, in your Son's most kind and gracious name, in Jesus' name, amen. Along the lines of my earlier comments, uh, we're going to have a, a moment of offering. Uh, we're not going to pass the plates. Those are going to remain in the back. But I think it's important that we set time aside uh, to pray over those tithes and offerings that you would make today or any day, that uh, they would be used uh, for God's purpose, used to provide the lights for this building, but, and used in the lives of people. And I know that uh, your offerings uh, are not restricted to the plates in the back or that we would pass, but that you help many people out uh, because that's the way of the gospel. And so uh, I would read, you know, from the gold plates of Nephi where the Spirit is uh, talking to Nephi. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Blessed art thou, Nephi, because of thy faith, for thou hast sought me diligently with loneliness of heart. And inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper, and shall be led to a land of promise, yea, even a land which I have prepared for you, yea, a land which is choice above all other lands. This uh, promise or statement of the Lord to Nephi we find repeated throughout the Book of Mormon. Various ones, uh, especially you can find Alma repeating this to his letters and his sons. Um, but the things that transpired here in Lehi and Nephi's life at the beginning on this journey uh, became part of the civilization, right? Became part of the spiritual thought of the civilization that they created. And so uh, it comes to us in the lines of our ministry and our walk because we have the abridgment of their records. And so if you will keep the commandments of God in all things, uh, you know, tithing and offering being one of those, uh, he says that if uh, you do what I say, then I'm bound. Right? But if you don't, then you have no promise. That's what he told me in my blessing in regards to tithes and offerings. And I have found over the years that as I have tithed, maybe not on a regular basis, but then as I tried to make the effort to catch up and make my record right with the Lord, that he has blessed me abundantly. And if I were to tell you how he has blessed me, you would think I was bragging. And so I won't do that to you today. But he has blessed me abundantly. 
from a shy uh, young farm boy who would just assume play with the dogs instead of go talk to people to one that has to talk with lots of people uh, and has put me in positions of authority. But this is a true blessing, right? Commandments come with a promise that if you will but do them, he will, he will bless you. And part of that time is simply that he blesses you with the presence of his spirit. And others, you find favor in the eyes of those around you. Uh, because of that Holy Spirit that dwells in you, they're attracted or drawn to that. These things are critical for our walk. And so Alma, in Alma 17, talks to his son Helaman and says, you know, let's compare the word of God to the compass, the Liahona. And just as when they did not pay heed to that compass and walk in faith, praying that God would show them the way to go through that compass, they uh, didn't travel a direct course to the promised land, but faltered. And he goes on to write how it's just as easy to give heed to the true compass, which is the word of God, as it is as it was for them to give heed to that physical compass. And so if we will but pay attention to the compass, to the word of God, to the promises that are therein, then he will lead us to that promised land, which is heaven, which is the true promised land. All other promised lands being a type and a shadow. And so there is this thing of prospering. And so while uh, I have had to work hard and I am not, you know, independently wealthy, uh, our family has enough to eat and to wear. And he has prospered us. And so he will you. And part of that prospering is not simply the temporal blessings that might come, but that is the prospering and following the Lord Jesus Christ to that land, which is heaven, right? There is a strong type and a shadow in this, a spiritual depth that goes to the heart of our humanity and our response to the Lord. So, I've talked a little more than I intended, but let us pray over the offerings that we would make. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time asking your blessing in our lives, a blessing that would encourage our hearts to, uh, to walk in the gospel path, to be obedient to your commandments, and to uh, give those tithes and offerings that are, uh, we are called to do, irrespective of those who might receive them and uh, any struggle that they might have in following you. For uh, our concern is not, uh, or our response to you and keeping commandments is not to be approved by man, but is to be approved by you. And that we would find that in our lives we... Uh, are obedient in all things, and that we may be a peculiar people. And in this peculiarness of adherence to your path and the love of your Son in our hearts, that people may see something different and be drawn out to you. And so I would pray for not only the money that would be given, but I would pray for our response, that you would consecrate all these things for our good as we are counseled in the Book of Mormon and that we, you would consecrate it for the good of your church, for the good of your son, that the testimony of obedience in our lives may cause us to grow in our testimony of Christ, that it would be such that uh, we could not contain it, but that we must share it with all, that your word might roll forth upon this earth. In a time of uh, turmoil in which the nations of the earth are at a loss, but we know that you are never at a loss and that your hand is sure and that you are mighty to save and mighty to deliver. And we trust in this. And so we would pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us remain seated and hence seeing him 284.
Good morning. I'm glad we have power. Showed up to church today, and I was taking it as a sign there for a second. Oh, go home. About six weeks ago, I had the opportunity to stand up front with Mark Rust, Doug Brock, Ken Rust, and Mike Ferris. And we were in the back. I was talking to Mark. And he challenged me to just flip open my books and first line I'd read, that's what I'd preach on. I told him that was not going to happen. But I told him that I felt like I was going to be asked soon to, to preach and that I needed to start to prepare. Forgetting that Ken was in the back room there, over here in that conversation, he pulled me aside after church to thank me for my, my prayer I gave. And he drew me in saying, you're not wrong. I immediately got my phone out to put it on the calendar, so that way I had proof. But uh, he said that I'd be speaking on the 23rd and to be ready. Little did I know what was going on in my life at that time I would be speaking to you all today about. So if you would like to follow along, I feel led to uh, read a parable out of Matthew 18 starting with the 21st verse. Jesus is talking to Peter, and Peter asks him a question. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall, I, shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king who has taken account of his servants. And when he began to reckon, one was brought unto him who owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant besought him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosened him and forgave him of the debt. The servant, therefore, fell down and worshipped him. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, and went and had him cast into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw that what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after all that he, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, because thou desirest of me, thou should not ha also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even I had pity on thee. And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him unto the tormentors, till the, all, the debt was paid unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother their trespasses." The last line is what gets to me the most. You see, back earlier this year, my wife and I, we came to the conclusion that my little car was no longer going to be sufficient enough for the family of three that we are now. Me heavily asking that we get a new car, of course. We found ourselves in a... Uh, a situation where we were able to get a, a brand new car. We didn't need three cars anymore, and we were hoping to use the, the old car to help pay off the down payment for the new. My in-laws, they have a next-door neighbor who had a, a son who found himself needing a car as his old one was no longer sufficient. And so we... Uh, 
we started the, the talks with them that they would be able to acquire my old car. They asked if they could take their car to a mechanic just to get a clean bill of health. And I said, that, that is fine. So they kept the car for a few days. They called me a few days later saying that their mechanic had given the car a clean bill of health and that it was a, it was a solid purchase. We used Kelly Blue, Blue Book to kind of help gauge what the price of the car would be based upon the market and whatnot. And so from that, we agreed upon a price. And I thought that was going to be the end of it. When you buy a car that is already 13 years old with over 200,000 miles on it, just because it's not showing its age doesn't mean the age will not begin to show soon after. This all went down on uh, September 2nd. By September 14th, 8 p.m. on a Wednesday, I had just gotten off work, and I was getting a phone call from a number I did not know, but it was an Alabama area code, and I only knew one person from Alabama, the individual that I sold the car to. So I took the phone call, and it was not a pleasant one. The individual accused me of being... Uh, withholding information about the car and then demanded that I would pay for a full diagnostics on the car and that I would pay for all the repairs of the car because I was untrustworthy. I don't know about you, but when I sold the car, I was under the mutual understanding that anything that would come of the car moving forward would be on the new owner's hands. Apparently, they may do things a little bit differently down in Alabama. He became quite angry when I told him I would not be assisting him with the vehicle as I needed the money to help pay for the sales tax and licensing of the new car. Once that was painted vividly in his mind, he went on to state that he had lost a tremendous amount of respect for me and that I was a poor character of, of a man. He went on to state that he'd be looking into what legal actions that protected him in this scenario in the state of Kansas and then hung up the phone precisely afterwards. Up till this point, the only thing that you could say that I probably had done wrong was I wasn't willing to help pay for a car that was no longer mine. After talking to several people, and including a lawyer, they assured me I had done nothing wrong. Let me ask you a question. Better yet, let me ask you two. Have you ever let Jesus in your heart before? Have you ever let Satan into your heart before? As I began to sit and stew over the events that had just taken place and the accusations that were cast before me, Jesus was nowhere in that room. I never spoke ill of him to another individual, but what I said in my heart And what I said when there was no one around. For you see, in my basement, I have a gym. I'm cheap. I don't like going to another commercial gym. I got to share things, germs, yuck. But in my basement, when there was no one in the house, I shouted to where the rafters above began to move. Words that should never be uttered from anyone's mouth. I would begin to play out these scenarios in my head and out loud of how the conversation would have gone differently. Because, you know, in the moment when being attacked, I'm not the sharpest thinker in the world. Roll with the punches. 
But after having time to sit on things, oh, what I wanted to say. By 9 o'clock Wednesday night, I was ready to uh, drive to Shawnee, Kansas. And I was okay with being on the 6 o'clock news the next morning for acts that I was going to commit. For you see, Satan took that environment that I was creating and he welcomed himself in because keep in mind I had done nothing wrong to deserve the treatment that was given to me I was that way for two and a half weeks my palms would get sweaty heart would begin to race there's almost a pattern worn into my concrete floor of the pacing that I would do back and forth of a conversation that would never take place. I called my dad, as all good boys should do, telling him of everything that was going on within me. And in the David call your like way, he said, pray. like watering a rock. That was some good information right there. For you see, my heart was hardened to this scenario. I didn't want to hear those words. I knew he was right, but it doesn't mean I want to hear him. That Friday... This gentleman tried to reach out to me. And in the headspace that I was in, in the conditioning of my heart, he was literally the last person I wanted to talk to. So I let him leave a voicemail. And he just simply said, when you have the time, please give me a call back. I had no intention of doing any such thing. To me, I was... Resolved of the matter. But as a good loving wife would do, she, she simply asked, just give him a call. You don't know why he wants to talk. So I put it in the counter that she was right that day. So I gave the man a call. The tone of my voice was giving the hints that I didn't want to talk by any means, but what would you like? He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for stating that you're a, a poor character. I let the moment get the best of me. Please forgive me. I said thank you for the phone call and hung up. I didn't want to speak to him. I wanted nothing to do with this individual. I felt that his apology was not sincere. In preparation for today, I stumbled across 3rd Nephi 5, 66 through 72. Behold, I have given you the law and the commandments of my Father, and that ye shall believe in me, and that ye shall repent of your sins, and come unto me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Behold, ye have the commandments before you, and the law fulfilled. Therefore, come unto me, and be ye saved. For verily I say unto you, that except that ye shall keep my commandments, which I have commanded that you at this time, ye shall, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, 
and it is also written before you that thou shalt not kill, and who shall and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment of God. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of his judgment, and who shall ever say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, and who shall ever say thou fool shall be in danger of hell's fire. Therefore, if ye shall come unto me, shall desire to come unto me, and rememberest that thou have, that thy brother hath aught against thee, go thy way unto thy brother, and first be reconciled to thy brother, then come unto me with a fulfilled purpose of heart, and I will receive you. I read that Wednesday morning. How could I stand before you today and speak upon what I thought I was supposed to be speaking with? Knowing that my brother had f tried to forgive and I still had aught against him. In the most millennial way possible, I sent him a text asking for his forgiveness. He simply said, yes. <laughs> Though I felt that I was not in the wrong, because of my actions, I was more at fault than him. I thought about that for weeks robbing me of any joy that I could have. That was conversations my wife and I had at the dinner table, and I would get angry and literally slam my fist into the grant countertop. She would then politely ask, please do that somewhere else, not on my countertops. What events in your life are also withholding you? Are there things in your life where you have hardened your heart, just like I had? Many years ago, because I'm that old, my father had given me these pieces of paper. They have topics on them. And they correlate with scripture passages that talk about that topic. I find I only bring them out whenever I'm supposed to be up front speaking. And last night, I found myself in a no different situation than that. And on that piece of paper, it has a subject called repentance. And I felt like I was supposed to look up one of the verses. It's a good one. Moroni 8, 29. And the first fruits of repentance is baptism. And baptism cometh by faith unto the fulfilling of the commandments. And the fulfilling, and the, fulfilling the commandments bringeth remission of sins. And the remission of sins bringeth meekness and lonely of heart. And because of meekness and lonely of heart cometh the visitation of the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter filleth with hope and perfect love, which love endureth by diligence unto prayer, until the end shall come when all the saints shall dwell with God. I found that passage, that verse, to be a domino effect, pushing one domino over to the next. The first domino being repentance. I would also add a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Something that I don't know of much. 
but I know that when it is there, it is undeniable. Back when I was younger, when I was around 14 or so, my father would encourage me to use a highlighter to find verses that I felt that were weren't to be highlighted. I don't, I wouldn't listen to my father too much when it came to church stuff, I don't know. But for this reason, though, I felt that I was supposed to do exactly that. When I was looking up the parable that I read at the very beginning, I found Matthew 12, 26, 27, where 14-year-old Stephen had highlighted. If you would. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men who receive me and repent. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world or the world to come. We are to repent and ask for the forgiveness. It only goes so far. Let not your heart be that hardened to where you would speak against the Holy Ghost. I feel like I'm nothing at times, even though the Holy Ghost is present with me. I don't know if I, will, if I want to ever know what nothing feels like without the Holy Ghost present. I can only imagine an empty, bottomless pit, a void that can never be refilled. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother in their trespasses.
God most holy. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus who came to live for us. Thank you for Jesus who came to die for us. Thank you for Jesus who rose for us. Thank you, Father, for the plan of salvation. Thank you for the promise that as oft as we repent, you will forgive us. Thank you for the hope of the future, the hope of eternal life, the hope of Zion. Father, I would pray that uh, as we leave this place and go about our daily tasks, you might share a portion of your spirit to go with each person, to enlighten them and alive them, and to show them the path of their way to go, that we might all become closer to thee. Oh God, thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.